Hello and welcome to Warping Brick. Today's video is a yet another video on my Kerbal Skill Real Solar System install. Today, I decided to check out uh, some new stuff from the mods I use. I actually really enjoy it. It's a grapefruit. I've covered it. I've covered it before. And oh, here's the thing: some issues will arise will prevent the mod from being fully enjoyed in this video. But yeah, you will see that later. Starting off, we have a fairly normal launch vehicle, using the near future launch vehicle's uh, parts, as well as some photon core uh, solid rocket boosters, and some Blue Dog Design Bureau engines. And we're going to be delivering a base to the lunar surface. Now, I actually called this uh, vehicle a uh, Mun Base, since I have I still haven't uh, gone uh, the uh, stock uh, Kerbal sol Solar System out of my mind. Anyways, we have a nominal liftoff on previous attempts, so at least one of the engines failed, using uh, seven uh, F1 engines. And and uh, with the current uh, time of launch, we're going to be on a uh, our pointing pr directly prograde. We'll get us into a orbit that is the same plane as the uh, orbit of the moon. So you can see us just in the solid rocket uh, motors there. And not the most efficient uh, stunt trajectory. I was too concerned about uh, getting the uh, inclination correct. We saw staging there and fairing deployment. It actually turned up the uh, ejection force on the fairing, as previous uh, runs to the fairing would uh, destroy the second stage. So we're continuing to ascend. I'm actually, uh, well, I'm completely uh, horizontal now. As we insert into orbit. And uh, yeah, you can uh, see the uh, base we're going to deploy, which looks a bit interesting. I'll get to that later. And there we go, we've inserted into low Earth orbit. And now we're immediately going to plot our trajectory up for our transmitter injection. And we're going to start burning fairly shortly after we deploy our solar panels to prevent the uh, base from running, uh, running out of electricity right now. And then you saw us detach that, uh, that second stage. And now, on the space, again, it's using grapefruit, which adds, well, it adds for the ability to convert a fuel tank into a habitation module. And so, yes, the fuel tank of this uh, upper stage is also the habitation module of our uh, lunar base. And really, what I want to show off is that there's uh, now uh, parts. Uh, there's parts uh, now for a horizontal uh, base, because previously all the parts were intended for more vertical uses in zero gravity or, or vertical bases, but uh, now there's uh, parts for uh, horizontal bases. Now, again, issues will arise will prevent that from being uh, fully explored. As you can see, we're already, uh, we've already done our uh, mid-course correction, and now we're arriving at the uh, moon, and we're doing our orbital insertion burn. Nothing much to comment on, as all this is fairly normal. I'm trying to conserve ignitions on the uh, J2 engines we're using for the stage. Yes, I'm using the uh, cryogenic engines, and since we have enough electricity uh, or le electricity production to prevent uh, the uh, fuel from boiling off, since cryo tanks allows you to just activate uh, this, this activate cooling on any uh, cryogenic fuel tank. Now we're performing our deorbit burn to land. However, and there's gonna be some issues that arise from this. Yes, well basically, this was not the first attempt at landing. It was attempts so we went out of communication range and uh, just had some suboptimal landings. So I had to uh, revert to a previous quick save, and that meant that we had to uh, basically, basically I had to completely cancel out our velocity and then start running in the opposite direction. So we'd land up within line of sight of Kerbin. And now that that's uh, done, I'm uh, going based off of uh, the uh, suicide burn uh, countdown on Kerbal Engineer uh, readouts. And to, I'm not sure why I'm like coming so so closely to doing a efficient uh, landing. We have tons of fuel to spare.
and now we're hovering near the surface and we're going to do a similar landing. You're the uh, smart lander for investigating the moon, which uh, if you don't remember, a lander that uh, did something similar to this where it landed vertically and then uh, flipped horizontally, or right above the surface actually. But uh, no, uh, notoriously, that uh, didn't go according to plan, uh, just as uh, this one. Since uh, uh, both uh, the space and the uh, probe that was mentioned, both of them uh, landed in orientations that were unsuitable for electric charge reduction. Now, um, this space is a different uh, case than that, as uh, we completely destroyed our solar panels. Thankfully, we do have a RPG on this. I mean, we're not completely... The base isn't completely dead. But uh, using our RCS, we can uh, slowly reorientate it. And now we need to drain the fuel from the fuel tank so we convert it into a habitation module. Which uh, the fuel vent I use uh, has a more impulse than I thought. Because as you see, yeah, the uh, base is going to be... Um, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be unexpectedly uh, moved upwards. And in a... Uh, this, well, basically I have to uh, shut off the uh, valve and then let the base settle and then restart it. Oh, in a future attempt, that's going to cause it to uh, fully uh, tip over, and uh, this uh, sequence ensues. And then this keeps going. We will in fact be able to get the uh, base back up, right? Again, a suboptimal landing, but eventually the base is now upright. Unfortunately, I did not have enough time to do another mission to get crew to it. But uh, yeah, I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and goodbye.